We're standing in a 156 acre unit, part of the 1425 prescribed fire burn block in the Metolius Basin. It's associated with the Head Stewardship Project. We burned this last Thursday, a week ago, May 1st. The objectives overall are for the purpose of restoring ponderosa pine forest. This is a ponderosa pine dominated stand and reducing wildfire hazard as well as habitat improvement. So when we burned this, we attempted to um, create what we call heterogeneity. So if you look out um, across this little draw right here, you'll see that there's some unburned areas. So we used firing patterns to create that condition. We did not want to, what we call, slick this unit off. We did not want to remove every single piece of material out here with fire. What we're trying to do is uh, remove enough material that it is safe for a wildfire to be attacked in here and um, to expose that soil surface to um, regeneration. We have a westerly wind component here on the Sisters Ranger District. It tends to push our fires downhill and towards some of our communities in the lower lying areas. So folks who live here or who have lived here for some time know what it is like to um, face a wildfire under summer conditions. And knowing what hazard reduction and prescribed burning can achieve, they have really become more and more supportive over time of the kind of work we're doing out here because they recognize that um, having a fire in an environment like this is much safer than dealing with one in an environment where the forest has not been treated um, and there's a lot more fuel available to carry fire. We are out at Tenalquat Prairie, which is a site owned by the Nature Conservancy and managed by the Center for Natural Lands Management. It was purchased about seven years ago by the Nature Conservancy and we've been working on restoring this site um, now using a variety of restoration techniques. This site has uh, a mixed history with fire. Um, when we acquired the site back in 2006 or so, we um, started burning uh, sections of the site. We never want to burn the entire site at once uh, just because we want there to be refugia for recolonization or areas where where plants and animals can move from an unburned area into a burned area. Um, and so every year we've burned a different section of the prairie. Um, so now we're actually getting to back to where we started and we're burning for the second time to get it back to native prairie. So this is an unburned area of prairie and you can see over the last hundred years or so a pretty thick accumulation of moss and litter has developed. And we've seen a pretty strong negative correlation between this thick moss layer and our native seed germination out on the prairie. Um, some of our non-native species seem to do just fine with this, especially the non-native grasses. But when you get two to three inches of accumulated moss and then thatch and grass litter on top of it, there's very few native species that can persist. It has a history of a horse grazing and, and I think some cattle grazing going back about 50 years and beyond that Native Americans utilized this site and it was burned regularly. It's also significant because it provides habitat for the Mazama pocket gopher which was recently listed as threatened. There's also plans to reintroduce the Taylor's checker spot butterfly within the next year to this site um, since we've restored a lot of the the habitat for the butterfly using fire and several other restoration techniques. Um, it's actually going to host now the butterfly and the pocket gopher. The fires here in western Washington are quite different from the fires that take place in eastern Oregon or even eastern Washington. Those fires in, on the east side of the Cascades are typically either the wildfires and the prescribed fires are removing a lot of that understory fuel and so reducing the risk of, of a high intensity wildfire, reducing those fuels. Here in western Washington, we are also reducing the fuels uh, by burning off a lot of that moss that I mentioned and the litter, uh, but it's not so much for a wildfire reduction, risk reduction. It's more to uh, create that open habitat for some of these rare and endangered species. So there are some similarities in terms of reducing the fuels, but it's a very different type of fuel reduction and for a different purpose.